Greetings everyone, this is Alan from QRT's technical marketing team. For this video, I will briefly go through one of the most trending topics in the semiconductor industry, the RF. The presentation will go in the following order. First, I'm going to briefly introduce what RF is. Then, I'll go through the concept of reliability testing. Lastly, I'm going to cover how reliability testing is assessed for RF devices. So, what is RF? RF, which stands for radio frequency, refers to the use of electromagnetic radiation for transferring information between two circuits that have no direct electrical connection. RF devices are well known for mobile application, smart city, and autonomous driving. Now, let's get into reliability testing. HTOL, which stands for High Temperature Operating Life Test, determines the reliability of a device at high temperature under operating conditions. By operating the HTOL, we can draw an estimated lifespan for the device, widely known as the bathtub curve. There are two cases of running the HTOL the HTOLS and the HTOLT. HTOLS, as standing for static, is used to simulate the device being operated on standby mode. Easily put, think of your phone being put on airplane mode. No calls, no internet, your phone is basically just turned on. To simulate such case, the static version of the H2L will be operated. Then, what if you want to simulate the other way around? When you're making a call, texting, surfing the internet, when it's on operation mode, then you will run the H2LD to simulate such case. Then you may ask, what is the difference between RF H2L and a regular IC H2L? As previously mentioned, depending on what you're trying to simulate, you want to make sure that you design the test accordingly. RF devices, due to their components like an amplifier, tend to heat a lot higher when operated compared to regular IC chips. If this is not taken into consideration and you test the RF device with the same testing conditions as you would with an IC chip, you might misconclude that the RF device has passed. What could then possibly happen is, the device will be installed in complete products like a smartphone, and the phone may start to malfunction a lot quicker than what the reliability testing has estimated. This may result in a huge disappointment within the customers, and in some cases, may be even dangerous to the users. So how is RF H2L designed? For instance, let's look at the real life model of smartphones. Here we have a control tower throwing out all the signals to numerous cell phone users within the range. In order to simulate this, we would replace the signal tower to a signal generator and each phone will be represented by the RF device for testing. When we design reliability testing, we want to make sure that the device is put under its worst conditions. QRT offers two different ways of running the HTOL, the socket solution and the SMT method. The main plus point of the socket solution is that, although costly for initial setup, the sockets are reusable for other DUTs, which means that the more DUTs there are to be tested for, the less costly it be for testing. The SMT method, however, although less costly to process, requires each DUT to be mounted to one board. So, if you're willing to test at a large quantity, you might want to consider using the socket solution in order to save time and money. We QRT have state-of-the-art scalable RF H2O equipment to run reliability qualification as well as ongoing RF H2L reliability tests to support manufacturing operations. We have the technical expertise to support RF H2L operation for our customers. So, for any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.